Happy Monday, everybody. Yo! Hello. Yo, what's up? Oh, dang. Hey, everybody. It's July 12, 2021. We got started with weird things here in just a few minutes. Whoa, since when? Uh, for the past uh, 13 hours, 40 minutes. No, for the past 30 seconds. That's how long we're getting ready for the Weird Things podcast. Mm. See, I tricked you with my double ambiguous wordplay. Double questions for huh. the triple answers. And we love it. <laughs> we love it, don't we, folks? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> triple, 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 double, double, triple words answer. We're question. tripling it. We're tripling all our doubles. We're doubling all our triples. <laughs> it's It's good. Good Can't be troll boy. Good you know why? Can't be troll boy. Uh, can you? Do I mean, you, you get it. You know why? You you hear the music cue when it when he's saying that and it's saying troll boy loses. Like they oh, have a really? music. Yeah, you can hear it uh, uh, as he's saying that at the end of the sketch. That's Dustin amazing. said he listened to it twenty times, Bryce. So I don't know. No, why you're trying I to only, only oh. coffin flops. No. I end it. Oh. I, I I didn't watch the whole episode. I only watch coffin flops over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. My wife is. Very annoyed. Ha! Oh, very annoyed. Why well, keep marching around the house like, <laughs> like little buff boys? Yeah. <laughs> they call them goose suits. It's, it's, goose an, old, it's an, an old term. circus term. That's why we call it that. Jeez, everybody claps so he has to get up. <laughs> Some of the boss comes up here. Every little of the boss. Comes That's up. not a problem. <laughs> I don't want to do it. That's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's do the Weird Things podcast, huh? Why don't we? Yeah. All right. Uh, catch you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hey, friends. I'm Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. All right. We're going to do a speed round of guess what? Okay. Okay. All right. Ready. Ready. This took place in Austria. Okay. Okay. The the you know the home birth of, the of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yep. Nailed it. So mm-hmm. it's one down. One down. All right. Man. Yep. Sitting on toilet. Okay. What happened? In Austria. Yes. Uh, the got toilet. No snakes. Eh, no snakes. No spiders. You Only clocks. Think- we uh, so you're a clockwork snake spider. A clockwork snake spider? Yeah. What's that? It's a spider snake that's made of clockwork. It's an artificial clockwork spider snake. Like a steampunk thing? Yeah. It's got to be, right? But why would it be with the guy on the toilet? Why do you think Arnold Schwarzenegger left? Because he was tired of steampunk themed uh, uh, by... I mean, clearly Bionics. some of us have read Total Recall, the autobiography <laughs> of Arnold Schwarzenegger, in which he says, which he quite says, plainly, I, I really want to be a farmer. I just think it's hacky. Why, but, why but, is everything but, weird there and is steampunky? So many, yes, exactly. I just don't like exposed gears. I, ha- I knew Stephen I had Lane. to come to L.A. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I, I think the toilet exploded. <laughs> The goggles, they do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> My eyes. <laughs> I think it's uh yeah, I think I think the toilet uh uh, uh exploded because it was filled with helium. You're not even trying. Actually, I don't know. Like I could see a pr- pressure differential. Like 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 if you're trying to lure us into the old trap of spiders and snakes, I, 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 I'm not believing it in Austria just because the elevation is too high. Um, so absent that... Wait, spiders don't exist in high places? I don't know if they do or don't. I don't remember ever seeing one. Well, you just said it with, with, a, with a tremendous confidence that, like, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, it's very high. No spiders, no snakes. I mean, that's look, this is my process. No, this I know. Is yeah. Me eliminating oh, I'm not saying things. that you're right or wrong. Saying... I'm saying you said it very confidently. And so I assumed you were totally like, like that you knew what was going on. This is like like Meredith Vieira asking the rationale for me saying C and then questioning why I eliminated A, B and D. <laughs> I'm just backing you up. 
Okay, all right, all right. I'm not saying there's no snakes in Austria. I'm not saying there's no spiders yes. in Austria. Sure. But I'm saying that Austria is definitely a landlocked country that's very high up in, in the sky. So uh, I, 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 for the first time, even though those are normally number one and number two of our go-to answers, yeah. I'm refusing. Saying no. I, I'm, I'm, I, am, I am personally... Uh, 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 Meredith eliminating these two, and and so and and what's left is I actually think you're on to something with an air pressure differential because yeah. it's at a high elevation. I think it's snakes and spiders. <laughs> <sighs> All right, you ready? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, man. Sits down. It's the morning. Mm -hmm. 65. On his throne. A man's Goes down throne. To sit his throne. And uh, 65, I assume, is his age, not the temperature, because it's metric. Yeah. Right. It'd be lower. Six yeah. That would be very hot. Yeah. There. Yeah. It's it's six AM. What's that a metric, Brian? Um, I believe that is one thousand three hundred beats after meridian. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes total sense. Sits down, his toilet, you know, he's got his newspaper. Like, what, uh, Bryce, what's an Austrian newspaper? The Austrian Times, of course. Yeah, and they love the Austrian-American Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> Sits down, you know, goes to you know, the High toboggan section. Times. Yeah, to, to read the toboggan scores from the previous <laughs> yeah, exactly. day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is season. Know, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, let's see what's going on here. Hey! Wait, hold um, on. And, and it's like, uh, uh, first... Before we get there, I want to. Ch I always like to check in on the Matterhorn report, which uh, okay. ironically is an opinion section. Also, I don't <laughs> think the Matterhorn is in Austria, which is no, it's a little weird that you put it's, that there. It's kind of kind of an ironic thing they do. Yeah, they're kind of taking it back. But, but they're taking but, but, the Matterhorn but, but, back. Uh, let me read the Matterhorn report. You're like, is it just me, or are there more things going <laughs> clockwork these days? <laughs> I used to have a biological pencil. Now it's a mechanical one. Wow. It's written normally, but you still, everyone reads it in that voice. In it's that, so in interesting. Yeah. Voice. Exactly. It's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And instead of, instead yeah. of a ticking clock, it's, it's a, a, a drops of water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he sits down, pulls up in the paper, and he gets bit in the genitals. Yeah. Yeah. By what? By what? By what? Yeah, God pythons. So God damn it. Pythons exist in the mountains, snaking and squirming all the way uh, through their the toilets. An albino reticulated python, apparently a nape. This is, folks, then I saw blood in this area. Good oh. Lord. Oh. Uh, this man's very calm about it. Um, apparently, it's a five-foot python, by the way. And apparently, the neighbor had a bunch of snakes, and one of them got loose <gasps> and crawled through the toilet. All right, hold on. It's not even wild. It was a loose snake. Hold on, hold on. I mean, imagine being at the bar. You're like, I got a riddle for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> What's five feet long and attached to these testicles? <laughs> <laughs> I got an answer. It's a python. Yeah. And it's on the loose, it's baby. An, it's an Austrian python. And my my neighbor's got some explaining to do. I mean, for the record, she's the one that sent it after me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> who's Who's got a reason to call the cops and uh, a, a toilet full of blood? The me, baby. Me. I mean, I'm going to start selling, like, snake grates for the bottom of your toilet <laughs> surprised, I mean, i'm surprised we don't have something like that i would love it if they just put them in dive bars just to just to like you know make it seem more dangerous than it is like like just you know uh, 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 please do not move grates for snakes <laughs> oh my god that's actually super metal okay so uh, well animal i mean you better you'd hope it was metal Maybe no, 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 plastic no. if you wanted to cut corners. Animal cruelty aside, I could totally picture like an art exhibit where uh, at all of the urinals, it'd have to be urinals, you would have a grate that would prevent them from being flushed, but it's nothing but just eels writhing. And that oh, so you're saying all. you're putting them in there. You're putting uh, eels like, yeah, for, for the, effect. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that you do it 
like so it, it can you know like make you seem like you're really cool like like it's like oh like why is Sorry, there grates I, in the toilet oh for the snakes oh no 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 put the snakes yeah. in there have the grates to keep the snakes there now it, yes. you're really really cool no yes, yes now now you're sell a warhol for you know that for that negative is money art. cool yes, yeah that is that is high art yes i'm sorry you're describing a a barrel full of snakes to pee in yeah basically yeah. here in yeah. texas we pee on uh, 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 people go out and for 99 cents they get a bag of ice and they they put it in the urinals it's that but with like eels or snakes yeah uh they didn't name the bad guys they didn't name the bad guys in gi joe ice bag <laughs> i object to everything we're hearing right now Wait, why they probably love it they would probably no, love Brian. being in no, captured not, and peed on. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what snakes do? <laughs> yeah, they wiggle around mm. whenever I pee on them. <laughs> well, uh, there you go. Okay, all right, sorry. Fire ant mounds. You actually build living fire ant mounds. Oh, this is uh, personal. No. Inside this is now, you're just getting your personal <laughs> yayas out here. All right, all right. Just a year from now, we see Brian like get arrested because he's throwing like kids' ant farms into toilets. All right. Die, fire! Not not to defense the indefensible and the horrendous. Yeah. But it is worth pointing out that one of the things that they started doing in urinals to get people to go straight was they put the little decal of the flies. Yeah. Ever see that? Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, fine. They're robot snake. Taking it back now. Clockwork <laughs> snakes. Okay, okay. That just wiggle. Yeah. When you, but okay, so you so you go to Universal uh, uh, Halloween Horror Nights. You go to to uh, Hogwarts, right? And it's just like, oh dear, make sure to be on the 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 real magic snakes. And they all sit there not moving. <laughs> A lot and of. And then you pee on them, and then they all start wiggling. Yeah. Are you uh, so? No, explain no, to me no, what's no, wrong no, about no, any no. of this. I, I love. I, I love, love, I love this for idea one. mostly because I wouldn't do it at Universal. I would do it at Disney and I would have a tiki room style little like they banter between the two. Like Nathan Lane's like, hey, look at the snake over here. Like <laughs> and then, or it's you start being it, they go, oh no, 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 see. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you put us in a very awkward position. Okay. Because we have to do our little sponsorship read. And there's yes. people that are going, I was. But I don't want people thinking that I encourage a sort of strange, deviant idea. So yeah. instead, go to our Patreon if you're against <laughs> this kind of thing. Yes, if you would like to protest against the concept of putting snakes in urinals, either by robotics or uh, 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 real snakes, then go to Weird Things Patreon at patreon.com slash Weird things. Uh, you can support this show. You can make sure that we keep doing it each and every week. We love you and make sure that if you are a patron, that you enter in your custom RSS feed into the podcatcher of your choice and you will get the bonus episodes up to and including our After Things podcast, which happens after Weird Things, where we talk about all sorts of, uh, of entrepreneurial and creative. Uh, pursuits and questions patreon.com slash weird things so this was pretty cool this was sent by Stephen greenhill and it's just it's a video of uh what happens when a zookeeper leaves a broom alone with a chimpanzee any uh, guesses uh -oh. uh oh i mean this sounds like hijinks i mean so like dude i'm i'm, I'm gonna guess he looks left looks right and begins to sweep. Oh, right, Brian. Like, do you, is that what you do when you see a broom? Yeah. It's your natural instinct to clean. Well, I mean, if I, I feel like you're laying a trap for me, but um, we've <laughs> me? seen. Me? Lay a trap for you, Brian? <laughs> we've seen many times that, that uh, chimpanzees and apes of all, uh, all of the great apes have um, uh, delighted in emulating human behavior. Uh, so I would imagine that that would be that's my that's my guess. I'm gonna lock it in. Oh, so you would do it too, and so you're saying you're great that you are great, Brian, by being a great ape. Are you? Uh, you're you're great. Saying? You're the greatest ape. It's like the saying, world's Brian? greatest showman. I, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, 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 we're talking hmm. about we're talking about zoo animals, right? Are we, Brian? Are we? I don't know anymore. What's going on? I I feel like I I I I stepped astray, and I'm not sure where I where I went wrong. 
Well, somebody just said that, oh, I would pick it up and start doing this like all great apes. And like, oh, somebody's got a pretty high opinion. Your, he himself. finds your claim to be a bit boastful. Wait, aren't yeah, great apes like chimpanzees and silverback gorillas? And uh, maybe I don't know my apes. I don't. I, I certainly don't. Well, and there's it's... nothing technically wrong with what you said, Brian. <laughs> okay. Don't there, was to it. there was a tone to it. There was a tone. Oh it. my god. Okay. Bryce, do you have this clip yet? Uh, I do have this clip oh. here. We've got it up oh. on from from Reddit. Nope. Wait. First, you accidentally defined great ape. Let's go ahead and read that definition, Bryce. <laughs> okay. This is from um, Google.com. A large ape of the family closely related to humans, including the gorilla, orangutan, and chimpanzees, but excluding the gibbons, an anthropoid uh, ape. Hey, do a do a search for brushwood in there, Bryce. <laughs> can you just do a command search for brushwood, or even Brian? I'll do Brian. Yeah. Oh, so brushwood would be considered undergrowth, twigs, small branches, typically <laughs> used for firewood or kindling. Yeah. Uh, no, not 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 a great ape. Not great ape material. Sorry. Just do Brian brushwood broom. And actually, <laughs> just let's see what comes up when we do Brian brushwood broom. Mm, the dictionary is not giving us anything. Mm, how about this? What would mm. Brian Brush would do if he picked up a broom? <laughs> okay, this this is this is going too far. Okay, we've got the yeah, we've got okay. the video here on Reddit. Here we go. <laughs> Was I exactly right? You son. You're exactly right. No, he's actually dead wrong because the ape did not look left and looked. Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> As you were saying, right. it, it looked like right. right. Hey, what about the windows? Right. What about the windows? <laughs> I, oh, I got the windows too. A <laughs> little guy, look at him go. Uh, yeah. They... <laughs> what am I supposed to do, Brian, when you kill the bit <laughs> sorry. by getting it right away? <laughs> sorry, that's fine. That's fine. Dude, you, did, you did the exact right yeah. thing, which is torture me. <laughs> um, uh, we, we've seen a bunch of stories about stuff like, um, uh, 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 forgive me, great apes. Um, uh, uh, seeing humans do things like to cool themselves off, they'll take a wash rag and kind of wash it over their face. They're like, ah, that's nice. And then they're like, oh, let me try that. And then they're like, ah. And then uh, uh, similarly, uh, I can never get enough of watching uh, any type of ape uh, be amazed by magic. That That is one of the things that makes me like, like they their ability to have object, a sense of object permanence and to yeah. be amazed when it's gone, chef's kiss. I... When I was a little boy, we had this like uh, like a surplus store, like all kinds of weird surplus. And once I went in there, and there was a bag, or was a little plastic monkey. I'm like, yes. And the little these came with these another little envelope. And I got it home. I put the plastic monkey down, and I noticed he had a hole in his big um, hole in his mouth. And I opened up the little bag. And they're little tiny cigarettes. <laughs> and it turns out you could put them in there and light them, and he would smoke the cigarette. Wow. You ever seen Novelty Smoking Monkey? Uh, yeah. Which, uh, uh, uh more or less uh, uh, ethical than actual the snakes. Oh, <laughs> I was, I thought you were going to say actual smoking monkeys. No, no. If we're talking My about robotic, if we're talking snakes. about ways, well, I mean, in the, in, you know, past the 90s, but before that, they did them real. <laughs> okay. Bryce, have you found this? Um, I found a toy. Yeah. I found a novelty smoking monkey. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Did yeah. we ever get a, re a result on Brian? <laughs> what would Brian Brush would do with the broom? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what would If you I click do? on like all the know. images, you'll see you a lot more of these. Google. That's an entire, it's an entire genre. Yeah, there's of... a Wikipedia page for smoking monkey toys. <laughs> it's Just... like, that's amazing. Smoking monkeys, I mean, just anything, drunk monkeys, smoking monkeys, like that really was its own genre of entertainment for like decades. Yeah, I didn't know there that many of them. There's a lot of, look at the, all the images for the Google search that, that for this. That feels it like is. it need, like that, that it was at some point, like something famous. Like it, it's something that either through like, like a circus act or something like that, like was just an iconic thing that then we now know as like, oh, this is just a funny element well, a relic well, of, a, of a time gone by th think about things that that we humans really enjoy seeing uh great apes of all varieties engage in like just now we had a giggle because you know somebody was using a broom yeah um now imagine it's highly addictive to use the broom and there's really only three steps to use the broom they involve 
tapping out a cigarette, putting it in your mouth, lighting it with the lighter, and then smoking it either American style or European style. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, if, if, if the giggle humans are getting is, uh, uh, look at apes, they're being like us, then that's, that's a pretty fast track to get there. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I think that the only thing that, much in the same way that now, like, you know, like, uh, like, oh, get away, kid, you bother me. Like, now that's just old timey entertainer guy and not wc fields right like not not like the joke is like wow he's really being abusive to that kid yeah there's just like it, but but even like beyond that you would just do a character that acts like that and you would never give credit to the fact that that was a famous guy then that was like his act right. right like i almost feel like there's so much iconography around the idea of a smoking a monkey smoking cigarettes that at some point that was like up it was like the great bonzo or whatever and and now uh, uh time has just passed by and maybe it was pre television or or movies and and now it's just oh there's just a lot of merchandise for a smoking monkey well well here let me let me, let me throw this out here and and you can let me know if this resonates with you andrew um uh man i should really go back and find out which book i read it in but but there was that one book on how to write comedy that i read 10 years ago that made an offhanded statement that i've never seen replicated i've never been able to google the source of where it came from but it flatly stated that we only anthropologists say that we only laugh in two situations we laugh when we feel surprised and we laugh when we feel superior and uh, a, a, a toddler falls down. Um, that is both. We're both surprised and we feel superior. A to yeah. toddler acts sassy like a grown up. We we feel superior. Like oh look at that. Uh, 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 smoking monkeys kind of both. Uh, it's 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 that double it's surprising. Whammy. Now, nowadays uh, though, we, th there's enough concern for the environment and for how humans are you know you know running uh, stewards of the animal world over everything. Yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, that that it's uh, softened that, but I would imagine twenty or thirty years ago, uh, uh, yeah, as Pendulet said for decades, there's nothing funnier than a smoking monkey. I, my problem, I've heard I had an acting teacher that that brought that up that said all the all humor is based on cruelty, and I'm like, I don't think that's true. I'm like, I don't think that's true. Like, like you know, why the chicken cross the road? Get the other side. There, where's the cruelty in oh, there? No, no, where's no. the part that, of that, that? That's why surprise is is why. I know. I'm gonna get to surprise. Yeah, the problem okay. surprise is everything. That that means any unforeseen consequence counts as surprise. So that's that's a hard kind of sort of thing. And then it's like you get into like awkward timing or you know because awkwardness isn't necessarily cruelty. And sometimes you, when you realize when you laugh at yourself, like well that was silly. And it's is it you know maybe superior versus future and past self, but the problem is the the surprise is just sort of the wishy washy thing. Like, well, yeah, it's it's a a thing that I did not know was on the other side of the equation. That's all drama, you know. That's every storytelling is involves in some sort of I did not foresee that or things did not line up where that was my expectation. So, yeah, I I I do see where Brian is coming from in the like if we get away from scripted entertainment, like comedy as an art form, and more look at humor as a reaction as like mm -hmm. you know a, a physical thing that happens in the way that people cough uh, uh if, if there's some element of like okay well what is you know and, and even andrew your, your point is well made that it's like all right well surprise is a little broad that's every everything that's kind of crazy uh, that 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 is not in our pattern recognizing maybe, maybe, maybe the phrase uh necessary but not sufficient would apply here where it's like um, if you don't feel superior when you la when you're laughing, either at the past you or the future or the fictitious person or whatever, yeah, uh, then you at least have to be surprised. And 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 I I, I still I, I think it's we're going on ten years of me trying to crack this code of any time I laugh where I'm not feeling surprised or superior in in a you know ethereal kind of way. Well, I guess that's, I think that's any time you've been entertained, you've been surprised. Any time your brain has had a little dopamine hit, it's because of surprise. So that's, that's my right. problem with that. Like, well, it's such a narrow, it's such a broad, yes, any, any new stimul. it's either, it's either cruelty or a new stimulation. Like, right. Well, which again, which is why I'm saying necessary, but not sufficient. And, and it's not yeah. saying that like 
like anytime you're laughing, you are, uh, 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 this is top down, not bottom up. I'm not saying that if you surprise someone, they're going to laugh. And I'm not right. saying that, that if you feel superior to someone, you're going to laugh. Uh, what I am saying that if you are laughing, uh, I, I have yet to find an example that you are not also feeling either surprise or superiority. No, I, I agree. I, but I, I'd say that anytime your brain has a little fire because of a video game or anytime you have a stimulation in your brain, it's because of surprise or some you 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 didn't see the end. And that's why I'm that's why I'm starting like I agree. You're you're 100 percent right. But I'm like that surprise is so it applies to just about anything we enjoy, any stimulation, anything like a musical song or something like that feels to me like it's just like, well, yeah, that's the brain going, oh, I didn't see that. That's cool. And either Actually, I'm going to laugh at it or smile. If, if maybe we can dive in a little, if we, we, we could bow out at any moment, but, but like a song that you've heard a hundred times, uh, let's say a really good, you know, EDM techno song or whatever, like when, when, when the beat drops, when the bass drops or whatever, when, when you get that buildup and that ecstatic explosion, you're not, surprised by it but you same as a joke you've laughed at a thousand times though same as a joke you've laughed at a thousand times though justin watching coffin flops over and over again oh he feels superior the entire time though about coffin flops yes every single time you watch coffin flops you feel superior no No. you don't feel superior to the sad man who's begging spectrum to let him back on i you don't feel you don't feel superior to the dead naked bodies flopping out of coffins over you're smiling even as i described them because okay the greatest go go on ever seen (laughs) uh uh no no okay I'll, i'll soften that point i i i don't uh, I can't deny that there is an element of like, okay, I would rather not be the dead body. I'm happy I'm not the dead body. Wh- which of the characters in Coffin Flops do you secretly hold at a higher station than yourself and you wish that you could be instead of yourself? Just name any of the characters in Coffin I, oh, Flops oh, that you I, feel like well, is at right, a higher sorry, status as, than as, you. As, as, the, as, as, as the only guy on this panel, with apologies to Bryce, that hasn't gotten a show on television, that I would, <laughs> I would uh, maybe for you guys, you're like, yeah, I, I, I would kill myself if I got put on Corn Cob TV. Uh, uh, but I would no, no, take no. it. I've been working a long time to get a hit on Corn Cob TV. Uh, uh, no, yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't really have I, I'll, I'll i'll take your i'll take your prescription on that <laughs> oh my god hold on I, but i would say like Thrice, i Thrice laughed at that from this side uh uh i edited scam school pilots the air and on science oh i'm sorry <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> justin no. you've been in well unaired pilots yeah oh yeah no plenty oh interesting plenty of unaired pilots like. yeah oh no yeah plenty of uh, uh just so close you know like you know offered I, to be on television declined uh so like yeah uh, I would say that, like, like when I watch Coffin Flots, I'm thinking of the production. I'm laughing at the lengths that they went and just impressed. Yeah. I'm just, it's like that. It's kind of like when somebody does something brilliant or you're like hysterical, like, I can't, this is amazing what you did. And for me, it's like, it's, I'm watching flop after flop after flop. And I'm imagining that production and putting this thing together. <laughs> and it's just like, I can't say I feel superior because I'm in awe. I'm in awe of the fact I, of like, and you look at the list but, of stuntmen who did all that. And then you're like, I, I would say that the more you think about it, the more you're like, man, I'm really surprised the lengths they went oh, to. It's surprising. Surprise. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm definitely I mean, surprised. But that's in, in, yeah, I don't know if we're just, but every time I watch into, it, yeah, if we're just going to turn into it, uh, I think you should leave dissertation. But like comedically, what works for me there is like Andrew said, there is an element of like, good God, how many of these set pieces did they do? <laughs> how well they're executed. And the fact that they are so percussive. I mean, like there is there is an element to comedy that is rhythm, and there is just like this, <laughs> like just insane cacophony of sound that happens every time that they go to it. And then you pair that with the fact that Tim, one of Tim Robinson's things that he's better at than maybe any comedic performer ever is that monologue vocal 
escalation where you just don't know where his brain's at or like where you know he's gonna go next but you know when when he's he's just you know uh, uh being like very defensive or accusatory uh, uh or just like this world's so sick <laughs> like just you know moralistic there's there's so much there that it's always kind of winding and then every once in a while or every you know separating it with this yes pity pitiable but that almost works against it right because you feel so like that's horrifying like like there there's a level to that like and, and and they walk that a lot on that show where you're dealing with issues that are on very close to the wrong side of the line but yeah. but the well, innocence well, of the themes are always like uh this barrier between I like, mean but 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 again I would it I, I, I would say that what you're feeling is I am so glad I'm not there to see this and I feel uh, I'm, I, I feel relief and joy because again, like like um, uh, 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 anthropologically, like uh, 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 from an evolutionary standpoint, uh, as I understand it, the purpose of laughter is you're out on a hunt with two or three other people, uh, and and then you hear a twig snap. All of you are on high alert, and then you see a uh, you know a, a, a silly ferret walk away that broke a twig you you experience relief yes and 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 it's that uh, it's that release that 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 gives you so much joy so likewise when we see a i think you should leave sketch where where it's an awkward funeral and uh you know the organs being played yes. in a wacky way you, you uh, uh again necessary but not sufficient you're feeling superior and they're like, I'm glad I'm not in that audience cuz I don't know how I would have kept it together and that is something i see more clearly like that sketch specifically with the late great Fred Willard, like yeah. uh, uh, that is one where you are building tension and then you are releasing it with these moments in a way that that coffin flops is is just it is one, you know, adrenaline shot uh, that that just kind of rides all the way through. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that like there is. There definitely is a formula to humor, right? Because we, we, and maybe it's evolving, maybe it's always changing, but like people can reliably write or produce comedy for a reason. I, I don't live in a hotel. <laughs> is it, that's not true, then everything else isn't true. And he never lived in a hotel. <laughs> rich. Very rich. Triples, that, that. triples so on the Nova. This, <laughs> and the, 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 what, for stingray. people who haven't watched, I think you should leave in season two. Uh, my two favorite were a sketch called Adult Ghost Tour, which is perfect. And then Dad's Friend with Bob Odenkirk, which I think is, if you want to study comedy, that's a textbook. It's just, it's so perfect because of just the character with all the elements brian described and then just the twist it goes both of them are great examples of like ah what an idiot uh i feel bad and then and like goes to her like oh i am that guy <laughs> uh, <laughs> like oh, it's me it it's, was me all along i'm that sad man i laughed at <laughs> it's it yeah, I forget whether or not you texted me this, Andrew, but you said, you know, uh, uh, that I think you should leave is like pioneering a new like form of comedy with those sketches. And I would I would add the Claire sketch at the very end as well to that. But like the idea that you're going to mix in without because the, the thing that makes uh, especially the first two so special is that they they make you sit with the sadness at the end. Like the, the, yeah. the sadness is the punchline. That is the out, which on one level is like weirdly funny in that like sketch comedy is notoriously uh, uh, difficult to end. Like the ends of sketches are often kind of just weird, loud uh, uh, moments just to get you out of the scene. Uh, and, and this one is like, oh, well, what if we ended on like unfathomable sadness on like, you know, the, the best dramatic 
uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the best dramatic uh, directors of our generation would have a hard time creating somebody so pathetic. Uh, yeah. it, it's, it's, it, it is exceptional. And, and I can't think it's, it's something where if you're going to start to talk about like the pantheon of sketch comedy, the greatest to ever do it never really thought about like, oh, what if we took this in a totally other tonal direction and it worked? Like there's plenty of times where, where, where people do it and it's like, oh, this is less than, or they're trying to be something they're not. But this is very much Tim Robinson. And, and even when you're like, oh, wow, that's crazy. It's like, well, I can't believe it, it, it pulls it off in, in the way that it does. It feels special. Yeah, the closest I could think was kind of kids in the hall. You know, they were not not this level, but they were pretty good at like, what was great about Monty Python? What was good about the really good SNL stuff? And then kind of like following that character through a bit. But. I think the, to me, the legacy of Kids in the Hall is that they really cared about their characters. And there's yeah. a reason why they kept going back to these characters over and over and over again. And it did feel richer than, you know, the 50th time that SNL did the cheerleaders or, or something yeah. like that, where you're just kind of running the same playbook over and over and over again. Uh, but at the same time, you know, every chicken lady sketch was was you know it it was no oh, yeah no I agree no I agree, version, I agree but it was yeah. the same sketch yeah. you know yeah no I think this is this yeah to, to our point earlier like, yeah no yeah. I think what Tim Robinson is doing is really like that ah we laugh now we're gonna yank the rug out from underneath you and we're gonna kind of make you're gonna humanize this person to such a level that you're gonna go oh <laughs> well and and like. You know, to to the point before, Brian, we're, we're, you're saying like, uh, uh, okay, like this is obviously a horrifying thing that you would not want to be a part of with like coffin flops or even like little buff boys. Like these are sketches of Speak like- Speak for yourself. Yeah, but like we're dealing with <laughs> Everybody like- Everybody clap for him so he has to come on stage. Like these are, you know, disrespect of the dead and like borderline abuse of the children abuse <laughs> if not sexualization of yeah. children and uh, uh these are very unfunny and uncomfortable topics that are are played and the show itself has this innocence to it where like these characters you never feel like they get why it's wrong and so the there's this barrier to it that that makes it cool because there's a million very talented people that could do those sketches and they would come off as sinister and gross and weird and you would feel alienated from it and here you're like oh they're just very strange yeah, sam richardson his conviction in that skit is just so all in all in not winking i'm doing a character all in that this is normal to do a uh, pageant with kids that, in muscle suits. That sheen of sweat that he's rocking the entire time. Yeah. That, <laughs> that ridiculously gigantic bottle yeah. of water. The bodybuilder bottle. His insistence yeah. that he needs to cut the music hard, hard. <laughs> hard. Look at that crop. That's a great crop. crop. Big crop. <laughs> Who's the carved, the carved beef? Who's that carved up ham? Who's carved up? <laughs> And it's like, and that's, that's like, you know, comedy, you know, the, the hardest part is like, don't try to be funny. And you, yeah. know, you get into comedy classes and like, ah, and some people are naturally funny and wacky and like, ah, I want to be like that. But the key is if you're, you have that conviction for the character and you watch like some of the, like Sam Richardson, his, there's not part of him that you, you observe him waiting for the beat to make a joke or something. He's just, no, trust the material. It's going to be that he's guy. He's fully present. And, and, and yeah, just uh, it's like the contrast has been turned up to 11. And it's just like, like, no, no, I'm fully here. I'm fully here. Even though I'm mm -hmm. saying these, these, uh, these bad practices for live events, <laughs> like, like, like there's no massaging or trying to save any of this. You like, know, he, he comes in in, I think the final two or three seasons of Veep. And if you talk about a cast of like just comedy killers, it's like everybody who's not like a comedy, like just assassin are great dramatic actors that are being fed all the funny, super clever, like one liners. And he walks in with a, with an energy that is totally un un unlike any of them and just murders just the, every scene he's in. He's stealing it against like some of the best to ever do it. He is so, so, so talented. Yeah. All right.
Uh, this is a preview of what we talk about in After Things, for anybody who's curious. Yes. Um, as we, uh, but really, you need to watch this. You know, I think you should leave. Um, uh, yeah. Very adult when you were. Gentlemen, yep. you know what happened yesterday? Sir uh, Richard Branson. Yeah. So, okay. I, I watched it live, and I was emotionally conflicted on many different vectors. First of all, the main horizon is... Um, First of all, we're all on team, everybody to space, private enterprise, going to space, hooray for everything for space. We, we've had nuanced discussions about wh what is the value of essentially a theme ride that is space-like versus actual payloads delivered to low Earth orbit or, or, or off to the moon or whatever. Um, uh, we've also been spoiled because we've watched SpaceX do so many launches and those dudes have their game on lockdown when it comes to like, there's never a dropped frame on a, on a SpaceX. And I mean, the only reason that a frame is dropped is it's because a rocket is exploding. Yeah. Uh, space, uh, 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 Virgin Galactic. Again, I, I think we, I, if I'm guessing, I'm going to place my bet. Uh, we all agree. Hooray for anyone paying anything for anything for a space-like experience. Um, having watched it, oh boy, uh, they, they did a fine job of covering up for a lot of lost uh, connection. They had a thing where they're going to play a, 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 a what's what's a, 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 a Khalid Khalid DJ Khalid. No, no, there's no DJ. Uh, That's Khalid. Khalid. Yeah, Khalid had a new song. Uh -huh. Like the idea was they were going to go to space. Richard Branson was going to issue an awesome speech. Okay. A and new, then they were going to play new song a new song under the Virgin label. Gotcha. And they were, uh, it didn't happen live. I am certain that they will edit it together and it will be awesome in, in so, in so the you, you watched the, the official Virgin stream live uh, as okay. it happened, gotcha, gotcha, as it gotcha. happened. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and also it was, get, it was getting a lot of coverage on like the 24 hour news networks and, and stuff like that. It was actually a bigger story than I thought it was going to be. Uh, yeah, yeah. Watching it live. Um, uh, they, they had technical challenges. I, 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 I'm feeling a lot of emotions, Andrew, and, and I'm, I'm not sure which ones should be the most dominant. Uh, I obviously, actually I take that back. The most dominant is hooray, yet another player, something, something space. But, but beyond that, like we actually have, there's, there's a Sega Genesis. Now there's a, a super Nintendo. Uh, I, I feel like we saw a good turbo graphic 16. Um, the Jaguar is going to be my, my bet for yeah. the gaming console, of the future, right? Yeah. That, that's, that's kind of how Neo I Geo. Sorry. Neo Geo going yeah. on on Neo Geo. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, I Virgin's goals for this space uh, are, no pun intended, uh, uh, different than Bezos and Musk. Like, the, he is he is pretty transparently, at least at this point, there to do trips to space. That's kind of always been their goal. And look, he did a trip to space. He went up. Uh, uh, boy, does it, I mean... I'm, I'm presuming that this was intentionally done. Uh, uh, I don't know how long or what, what the schedules were, but it sure does make Bezos going into space in, in the eight days uh, uh, a little less special than it would have been if it were to happen before. Uh, uh, that, for whatever reason, is the thing that interests me the most, is, is whatever interpersonal rivalries these uh, uh, billionaires have. But... Uh, you know, as far as it it happening, that's great. I'm I'm very excited it happened, and I'm I'm more excited about the fact that um, uh, 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 everything happened safely because uh, uh, beyond the actual lives on board, I think the 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 idea of man's relationship to space is very important, and I'm glad everything was great. I, you know, there is the. There was the debate of like, well, where does space begin? And and that's somewhat of an arbitrary sort of thing. You can sort of say, as you can go, oh, well, there's no atmosphere. Well, the International Space Station goes through atmosphere. You know, there's then that's why they have the adjusted solar panels. And so you have that. Well, where's the the Carmen line and whatnot? And so that was uh, Blue Origin tweeted out an infographic like <laughs> earlier in the week that was like explaining where space began. Yeah, which was 
a little bit uh Sassy. got they got a lot of backlash yeah they got a lot of backlash over that and now, then uh, but bezos congr- before before you share that with me because i've not seen it i will say even as i was watching live uh they 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 flew a plane up they did a rocket thing up uh there are human beings who can hold their breath as long as they were quote unquote in space. Um, the, uh, the actual height, I was surprised. Uh, what did they get to 150,000 feet? And then I, I've been on a plane enough times to know that that's five times higher than a plane. I'm like, that's space. All right. No, they're, they're t- the highest altitude was 279,000 feet, which was, you know, roughly like eight times, eight, nine times height. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is, uh, jeez, oh, Louise. So they did, harsh. they did an out and out fact sheet here. <laughs> this is the, the Genesis versus the TurboGrafx-16. Compare the, oh my compare God. <laughs> the, the Blue Origin experience and it is blue text for the Blue Origin and red text for the Virgin Galactic flies above the Carmen line, internationally recognized, uh, boundary of space. Blue Origin, yes. Virgin Galactic, no. Vehicle type rocket, uh, a Virgin Galactic high altitude airplane. Uh, uh, escape system. Uh, yes, there is one on Blue Origin. No, there's no escape system on the, the Virgin Galactic plane, which actually makes the Virgin Galactic plane sound more badass. Uh, flight history. Wow, that's petty. Wow, is that petty? But you want to know what? So- it, 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 look, man, if, if you're doing this as a publicity stunt and somebody out publicity stunts you or does it earlier, like you just got to live with that. Yeah, so uh, Bezos then congratulated on Instagram and did his congratulations just because also like we're talking about Richard Branson, the guy's you know a global treasure and a hero. Publicity machine. And, yes, uh, yeah, he is yeah. Yeah, a, a great, a great, a great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the world is richer for having a Richard Branson in it. So, and I I thought about this too because it was just uh, and and I and we uh, to our listeners like we have gone on uh, before about you know what a uh you know getting too excited about things that are just for rich people to take rich people tours into space isn't the most exciting thing about space um but it it does it does that money and effort to create a market early on does help later on virgin galactic using you know building upon the technology from 20 years ago that won the x prize has now created what appears to be a very reliable system that can get six minutes of weightlessness, which you can do a lot. Like, you know, those vomit comets are expensive. And even trying to do those charters, which you get a maximum of like 28 seconds, six minutes of weightlessness is a good experience for weightlessness. You can do a lot of testing under that. That's good. Uh, when Blue Origin, you know, the Blue Origin suborbital, it'll be cool because you'll also be able to do payloads and be able to do research on that. It'll go higher and have theoretically more weightlessness time. A lot of potential for research. It's going to be driven. We're going to. It's a tax. Look at these things. These are devices to tax rich rich people to pay for making space cheaper for all of us, right? And for science. Yeah. And right. also, uh, uh, look, we can we can you know do whatever uh, uh, rolling of our eyes at uh, uh, whether or not that was really space or not. But if we all got text messages saying. Hey, I'm Richard Branson. Would you like to go for a ride on the Virgin Galactic space uh, uh, experience? We, we would, would all... instantly tweet, "I'm going to space." Yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, it would oh, be it would be are, awesome. Are we going on a Falcon Nine or a New Shepard at least? Because yeah. then I know. <laughs> oh. No, we would do it. I mean, to have six minutes of weightlessness would be awesome, and 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 yeah. them opening that uh, uh, up is is great. It is uh, uh, it is very funny that. They have been slow playing this drum beat for, uh, for Blue Origin for now. 17 over, years. Well, I mean, it, in specific, if you look at the stuff that they've been releasing uh, uh, on, on all the Blue Origin social media channels, it is just like, oh, like, here's Jeff Bezos in this very produced uh, reality show, like asking his brother if he'll go to space with him. And here's Jeff Bezos asking a a woman who was a space pioneer, but never got to be an astronaut to go to space with him. And uh, like, this has been built up and built up as this massive public relations win. And then here comes 
Richard Branson on a jet ski, like saying, I'm going to space, mate. Look at this. And, you know, gosh darn it, if he didn't go out there and make a gigantic story about it, because guess who's really good at getting publicity more than Jeff Bezos? It's Richard My Branson, favorite. one of the best to ever do it. My favorite, uh, like there was a meme that came up yesterday. It was like, money can't buy happiness. And then it was Richard Branson. And, or what, and it was a Richard Branson kite surfing with a naked model on his back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a question came up. What does this do about space junk? You know, well, it's suborbital. This this is going to do nothing to contribute to space junk, you know, no more than what an airplane flight does because it doesn't have the velocity to get into orbit. So this doesn't contribute to that problem, doesn't make it an issue, whatever. In theory, the cheaper, we can't do much, we don't do much about trying to eliminate space junk right now, though it is a problem, is because it's really expensive to, to do that. And so none of these crafts are capable of like removing it because they're all suborbital, they can't get up to you know really do anything significant. But when you start talking about SpaceX Starship, when you can reduce the cost to, to you know, dollars you know like you know 15 dollars per pound to put a vessel up there you could start building inexpensive mitigation techniques you could start building you know m you know there's a lot of different strategies for figuring out how to get rid of it and you can start doing that you can start doing things where you start putting things in paths to sort of try to clean stuff up etc um, so is 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 there a, 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 a i don't know if you saw it but uh, i seem to remember over the last week or so there was a story about uh, uh the bfr uh, being able to, like its fairing, rather than blowing off to the side, would go vertically to maximize its position so that as it floated around, it would catch as much just BS debris as possible in sort of a space environmentalism uh, phase. Yeah, but it's the, the altitude that they drop that thing off, I don't know how much it would, how much it would do because it's, it's really, they shed that pretty early on the the fairing for that um but i mean you but if you build and also that's that's a pricey rocket but if you build a starship that's got you know a system and there may be way better methods and you know that, that like inflatable because you, you know you think about like you could do inflatable kevlar bags or other sorts of ways to sort of you know capture stuff yeah i guess um, i guess what i'm remembering is this story from six days ago elon musk says spacex starship could chomp up space junk with the its starship moon. yeah you said yeah, the yeah. bfr well I, well I don't know I, uh, what's what's the difference isn't the starship the thing that goes on top of the bfr on its way to mars well there yeah yeah well it doesn't really have fairings it has a, i mean the, the, i thought you meant like the uh the 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 rocket the which would be uh, the, the, the what, three what, booster what, one. What, yeah, whatever what you mean. Yeah, yeah. The that starship opens yeah. to release the payload was uh, as I understood it. But but yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but yeah, that definitely, yeah, using Starship for that, you know, totally, totally. Um, so you know, that that's a possibility or building some sort of special thing that increases surface area. Um, you know, you have to sort of figure out like how to get into like different orbital paths, but cheap access to space. You know, somebody said space Roomba. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's gonna be there, there was, um, uh, oh man, I'm going all the way back to like late eighties, uh, three, two, one contact magazine, uh, uh, Ooh. for this, for this idea. But, but in the idea of cleaning up space junk, there were thoughts of setting up rockets that sort of just explode with a, a gentle foam that anything that hits it just becomes just a little bit more heavy and then falls <laughs> down. And, uh, it would also land on satellites, but satellites are prepared for you know the possibility of needing to you know either adjust gyro or yeah, re, or, yeah. or, or chemical blast or whatever to to adjust for orbit maybe i mean it, it depends to like the velocity too because you might just make a heavier object to do it but you know could be i mean the foam could could make it with it impact something like yeah it could lessen the impact on it by just over a larger surface area so. Well, well, I guess the idea that that as I understood is, let's say you got a bolt flying around the world uh, that's a troublemaker. So you you create a, a I don't know I'm making these numbers up a you know 20 miles by 20 miles cloud of just uh, 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 foam, and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, that same bolt comes and that bolt that might have gone for 16 years around the Earth mm -hmm. is now just has enough mass that that it, that it falls down in two years instead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you could, yeah, slow down the velocity of it. Yeah, there, I think, yeah, a lot of the, a lot of strategies to look into. And that's, if you go, there's tons of papers on this stuff and all comes down to 
but we need to get to space to try it. And yeah. right now we're sort of still spending, we're at the point where mitigation strategies aren't as cost effective as just putting stuff up there and hoping it doesn't get impacted. But we've seen, uh, you know, recently we've seen different, you know, we talked about when the shuttle went up, the reason they started flying the shuttle, they, after the first mission, they decided that it would go, it would orbit backwards, you know, engines first, because when it came down, there was a crack in the windshield. Wow. Like, Dude. that's no good. That's, that's bad. <laughs> it's almost like there was trouble with that program. Mm. A little bit, a little bit. Mm. So, uh, congratulations to Richard Branson. Yep. And I think, I think this is only going to raise the attention with Bezos does his thing next, because it's like space summer, you know, it's the summer of space. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Any picks? Uh, yeah, I tricked my kids into watching Chef. The, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, John Iron Man's Favreau? friend. Yeah. John Favreau. Uh, Iron Man's friend. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call him. Iron that Man's friend. Uh, it, I, I, I was shocked at, number one, how long ago that movie was. Seven years uh, which means that my, uh, uh, of the two, my 13 year old was six. So of course she would have no memory of this. And, uh, I got them to start watching it, having no idea what it was about. And they're all like, okay, so I'm about cooking. And then very quickly you realize, oh, this movie's not about cooking. <laughs> and, uh, uh, they loved it. They loved it. It's delightful and joyful. It's bliss. It's awesome. It's charming. It's sweet. It's nice. It's kind. I love it. Uh, I never saw it. What? Yeah. Highly recommended. Mm. I I'll sit and watch it again with you. Mm. But, but that's going to be one of those where it's like, it'll be an excuse to sit down and crack open a couple of beers and eat some Cubanos. And <laughs> look at us. We're watching. Look, Jeff. we're watching hey. them eat and drink while we're eating and drink. Yeah. It's like a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> His family. <laughs> family. Yeah, I don't know why everybody's making a big deal about Richard Branson going to space with Ludacris and Tyrese did it in Fast <laughs> Nine a week earlier. Um, <laughs> using the same method. <laughs> and in a Pontiac yeah, Fiero. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my pick will be I think you should leave. Uh, I, I, I'm very excited that there was a second season. I'm very excited it was as good as it was. Um, I, I just... My only hope is that they knew that they were going to need a season three quickly and they shot 12 episodes and they're releasing them as different seasons. Oh, my God. I mean, first of all, that's, that's, my the, only that's the other thing. What was it? Six episodes of 12 minutes each or something? It was a series it of was YouTube a videos. It breeze, <laughs> a breeze to get through. Yeah. So uh, uh, more, more, more. Uh, I've got a pick. Yeah. Um, if if I can throw one in here, I uh, end up catching this. What's up? Sorry, so we're sorry, just what's up? Back in the class, in the back of class, man said water steaks, steaks, which is not correct. It's, it's sloppy not, steaks. It's sloppy steak. Uh, look, you can just order a steak and a glass of water, and you know, then you got to eat it real quick because they're gonna kick you out. Bryce, please go ahead. Uh, my my pick. Uh, this baby doesn't think I can change. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Surprisingly, uh, my my pick for for this week is. Uh, the new Marvel film, Black Widow. I thought this was a good, fun, dumb film. I thought this was a really... Uh, someone, we were talking, someone was talking about it, I think, during a shoot that we had over the week. Or maybe it was some opinions about it. But describing it as very Mission Impossible-like. Uh, kind of the more recent Mission Impossibles, I guess. Uh, and I see that a lot. Uh, it's a cool action um, so you like this one because you 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 get a little uh, get, you get a little numbed out with with the Marvel stuff. You know, I think part of why I really like this is because it's not a superhero movie. Like one of the characters it's more has of a spy got spy action. Yeah, one of the yeah, characters has yeah. some powers. Black Widow is not that person, and so I think that that loosened up a lot of it, where they had to focus on it being a big spectacle, a lot of big action set pieces, and I think it worked out. Uh, worked out pretty well. And I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. I yeah. thought it was good. Um, I think the plot is is kind of if you if you put in uh, uh, an AI generator mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of Marvel plots and said <laughs> Black Widow movie colon it would just spit out that exact script. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, the cast I loved and and I think that uh, Florence Pugh was a great. Uh, addition to the Marvel team, and uh, uh, I'm excited to see her go forward. Like halfway through the movie, because uh, 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 obviously this is taking place before 
uh, of you know oh, where we are in the current games. timeline yeah. Yeah. in in Marvel, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is yeah. introducing us to her because we're probably going to see more of her going forward. Um, and I was like, we're probably going to see time. less of you know who's he. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely because she died. Uh, but, also, <laughs> also, uh, I watched I watched this uh, via the. Disney Plus premiere access system. Yes. For buying buying a movie instead of going to the theater. Uh, I thought it was pretty easy to use. They take PayPal, so you could just oh. beep, boop, 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 and then you got it. Yeah, they actually released numbers on that, I think, today. I think it was like 80 million in theaters and 60 million in in Disney Plus direct money, yeah. uh, wow. which is interesting because... The big thing throughout the last year when uh, the studios were were going back and forth with the exhibitors about like, all right, well, in a post-COVID world where y'all can't open legally, we need to start uh, futzing with some of these exclusivity windows and we need to be releasing things that are, that are outside of it. Uh, Disney being in the most secure position and having these, these movies, Marvel movies specifically, I think was the big question of, okay, well, what is, what does Disney do? Um, I'm 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 curious curious to see where 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 we go with some of these uh, these conversations going forward because I also watched it at my house when a friend of ours uh, just texted me, "Hey, I'm an idiot and I bought uh, uh I bought Black Widows. So since you're currently stealing my login for Disney Plus, please feel free to watch it." I said I sent that same text to my parents. So <laughs> uh, the circle of life. Uh, Angie, you got a pick? My pick is Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, hey! that's a great show. What, what got you watching Malcolm in the Middle again? Uh, my girlfriend finally watched all of like Seinfeld, and then we were looking at other. I'm like, like, well, you know, another great sitcom that like is underrated, but you look at just what it kind of how it pushed sort of the envelope. It was this great sort of bridge between the '90s and the aughts. Yeah. So, um, watching that just fun, nice little 22 minute episodes. Yeah, very it's... bizarre prequel to Breaking Bad. It all makes sense, though. It really does. Though. Yeah, when you really think about it. Yeah. Uh, no, what an iconic show! Like just, just uh, uh, because I wonder, had there been a single camera comedy like that on prime time, I before, before two thousand, because I, mm. I, I at least that was given. Well, I guess because like every everyone hates Chris comes after this. That was another single camera. Like like it really was, uh, uh, iconic for not only family comedy but also um just comedy in general in terms of of leading the way single camera wise. I'm looking at a list of single camera comedy shows. Uh, I mean you get there, there's a history to that. Um. Bakersfield PD and but that you know so, um, I think that it, but it was I don't know I, I thought the do you look at what I like about the show is like when you talk about like the you know the, the era of difficult men or the difficult the anti heroes or the like they're bad like yeah. they're 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 awful you do not want these people as your neighbors you look at like how cruel they are and everything else you know um it's just but funny and likable and just a really great casting. Mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean yeah you you really cannot you cannot touch the cast that can show so good. yeah i see you mentions the fourth wall breaking which is definitely like proto the office right where people would have interviews mm, and talk. i don't know i was in third grade when i was watching gary shandling show uh, where, where that was his whole bit and he was getting criticized for yeah talking to the camera constantly and he's like i don't understand what the big deal is oh, I the guess, news yeah. people talk to the camera why can't i do it it's 1983 yeah no i mean yeah, it's not to say that it was not you know ever done yeah but, but certainly doing it in a family-friendly show is is uh you know part of what made gave it its charm and i guess like larry sanders was a was a a, a single camera uh, a single camera yeah, show, no, no laugh track, but also well. although, that was also before. Yeah. Although, although this, yeah, the cinematography is is different. Like, like there, there's there's a difference to like what they do in Larry Sanders. Well, and then, and then I like guess if having, we're really going like, the back, very nineties, we can go back to the late seventies. Spinal Tap is, yeah, that's a that's a documentary though. I, mean, I think we're talking about television, yeah, uh, or a mockumentary, yeah. as it were. But but, but yeah, uh, uh, but yeah. Malcolm in the Middle, 
rules. Secret rule of Alex Mack. Oh, I loved I love that. Is that was that a comedy though? I mean that was that was almost a drama secret rule of Alex Mack. Turned into it's, she turned into into metallic goo. What? Secret world of Alex Mack. What? It was like it was right. I, I just repurchase. What? <laughs> oh. Hey now, uh, gentlemen. Yep. It's been weird. Yep. Right. Boy, I I I, right. I felt uh, right. I I I know we're going on break, but real quick, I really do like as I was watching the Richard Branson Virgin stuff, I was like. Like, 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 I, I know my general feeling is Hooray's face, but it was like, we've had so many discussions and we've sliced this thing so fine about who's cool and who's not in this like WWE nested story within stories kind of way. I, I, I didn't know how to feel about it, but about Branson. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's kind of the clown prince. Of I, all I, this. Right? Like, like he's, he's not trying to be Lockheed and Boeing. Like he's trying to. <laughs> my sell name is Lockheed Boeing. I've changed my name. Yeah, exactly. Sir Lockheed yeah. Boeing. They're my legal names now. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh. All right, everybody. We'll do after things here in just a few. Right, same as it ever was. Just me and you, these clods. How just it always trample is. Trample off, and it's just me and you carrying the mail. Isn't that how it always is? I Rain, know. sleet, snow, or hail. <laughs> just Bryce and the gerbs <laughs> bringing you guys the uh, the best that conversations have to <laughs> offer right now. You know what I? Uh, okay, workout, workout talk. Go. Workout talk. Yeah, yeah, work. Uh, you know what my secret trick has been lately? What? Uh, has been do the elliptical, but the mm -hmm. elliptical at my gym yep. has a heart rate mode. Okay. And so you do have to keep your hands on the little yeah. heart rate thing, so you can't use the upper sticks. But what what it does is it adjusts the resistance on the fly. So you run at you know, or you you know move your lower body at whatever pace you want, and it keeps adjusting your pace or your resistance so that your pace. heart rate is at where you want it. Gotcha. So you're not peaking out too too long. You're not. A little, you're not under for too but long. But you're staying at the like fat burning heart right. rate or 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 whatever. Exactly. Uh, uh, that's and and I I've been liking that because I can I can do I'm good with like aer aerobic exercise, but I like do not have the physical like endurance for the footfalls of running for for a very for an extended period of time. Yeah. So you kind of get rid of that, and you you're kind of just in that burn zone. It's it's that's pretty cool. I'm trying to get back into my. 15 minute high intensity oh, workouts. Yeah. Um, which uh, inconsistent. What's holding you up? Just work stuff? What was that? What's what's holding you up? Oh, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's hard to do. It's hard to get into and, and you, you kind of have to do it all the time or else it just hurts for three days after you stop doing it. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to get back to it. I did it on Thursday. I'm going to do it today. Today's also a lifting day, so we'll, we'll do we'll do that. But, um, you know, so far, I, I, I hit, I hit uh, and, and this is going to be the worst part of the show because nobody likes to hear about weight <laughs> and numbers, but, like, I was numbers? at a certain level. I don't even want to do it because that's what triggers people okay. is, is as soon as you start saying numbers that everybody's like, number, <laughs> my relationship to number is totally different than your relationship to number. Sure, sure, sure. Um, percentage wise, percentage wise, what is the change? Yeah, I was, well, I was, I was, uh, uh, I was at a point where uh, uh, I was good. Mm. And then I started trending like five pounds over. So I was like even like three pounds underweight, basically three three to, to five pounds underweight, and then I got it was like a ten pound increase, mm -hmm. and uh, I was like, I need to let me just go ahead and refocus on 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 where I'm going, uh, what what I'm what I'm doing, mostly because through through the pandemic when I when I lost weight, I bought a lot of new clothes, uh, and so I'm like, well. Atta. These are my cloth prisons because <laughs> uh, uh, we ain't going back to mediums, mm. uh, uh, which means I got to change know. the way I'm living mm. if uh, uh, if that's if that's if that's the case. So, yeah, it's it it's uh, it, it's 
it's important. I've been TikTok has been giving me a lot of workout tips, videos, and here's here do this every day to work on your you know all the different fitness influencer guys. I guess they seem very nice on TikTok. They do generally seem pretty nice. There's just like it's like a very nice a Filipino man with a with a bun and he's like, "Hey, everybody goes at their own pace. What you got to do is remember to hydrate and be positive." I oh, see and, my I don't know, maybe it's it's giving me the intense guys. It's oh, giving me the get, lifters. It's giving me the Yo, you don't hey, don't make these mistakes with your arms or whatever. Yeah, you want to you want to lift. <laughs> you want to lift. We're going to lift. <laughs> Sk- yeah. Sk- uh, like and for part two. That's right. That's right. Or it's the 30 day challenge. Cliffhangers. You gotta, what is this? TikTok? You gotta. <laughs> All right. Justin's gonna go take a break. Hello, everybody. We'll do weird or we'll do after things here in a moment. Yeah. How was your How's your Sunday, Bry? Uh, it was fantastic. We went to to the lake. Ooh, fun. It's swimming in the lake. Josie bonked her head real hard at a liability trap and had a big old like silver dollar sized goose egg. Oh no. Yeah. Aw. Not gonna say the place, but oh boy. I visited uh, our buddy Brett Runceville um, last week. Yes. And, and whatever photo you've seen of his stairs, the crazy stairs does not. It's. I'm told that he they got, are intimidating. <laughs> so those of you listening, our buddy bought a great house in the Bay Area. Lovely, lovely area. The one catch is there's the garage at street level. The house is up on a hill and you have to go up five flights of stairs <laughs> to get awesome. there. And I mean, full flights. So so we he, went, he bought the house? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh dude, that's amazing. Yep. And because of perspective, you look like, oh, like, like understand that this is just a short, this is a half a flight. Everything else is full flights. Yep. And you go up and 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 up. And like, uh, I bet he loves that about it. I bet. Oh, I he bet. Had, yeah. I think he, he, he I think he liked it at first. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> at first. Well, so we go, we go there and like, oh, let's go for a walk. He lives near this amazing trail. Like it's, a, they found out there's this really great trail. It's beautiful a great look, every perfect. We go for this walk on this trail, long ass walk. We get back. I can walk on level ground for days. Like I love walking. I can, you, but you put me on. A, I'm a Florida boy, so you put me on an incline, you mm-hmm. know, and it just wears on me. And like, <laughs> look at the that. second we came back, the moment I finally reached the top stair, my right leg just started to cramp up. And I'm like, if I had to go another flight, I would have been like just staying, you know, on that flight, that level. It was just wow, intense. So, I I uh, love I love I I love what I'm seeing. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like amazing. every piece of furniture, everything in that house had to go up that flight of stairs. Yeah. Back my breaths. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. 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 Every day is leg day for the Rounsevilles. Oh it's God. awesome beautiful house beautiful early that's just insane though it's just like you just you don't you don't appreciate oh, a couple flights ah oh, you know people live in, oh no let me just he tell did you the ma- uh it was worth it to flee the state to avoid being there for brett's moving day <laughs> <laughs> i fled brett. the state so i didn't have to get guilted into helping him move into that house which <laughs> he, i, he I said... assuredly would have done He said that when he did the math for moving day, he climbed more steps than the Burj Khalifa. Yes. Wow. No, yeah, his, yeah, (laughs) his, his, his tracker, his like uh, uh, Apple Watch or whatever had that day was he had climbed the Burj Khalifa. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, Also, he needs an internet, he needs an internet repeater to, uh, uh, To get to, to get the he, signal up to his house to get the, no to get the signal to because he he had that classic conundrum of did I close the garage and then realized that he had to walk all the way down and all the way up to see whether or not he had closed the garage and wow. so he's like all right all right I'm getting a camera got a camera an internet camera and realized it doesn't reach my house I need to get an internet repeater to Dude, get to the we house were, that's we were it. sitting there. 
and they're like, oh, let's get some dinner. And then Katie's like, okay, I'll go get it. Well, okay, cool. She leaves, and then as she's heading towards the door, I realize that means going all the way down the GD stairs, yeah, going to get food, then bringing everybody's food back up the stairs. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> said nothing. I'm like, yes. like, and I'm like, all right, good luck. This I'm not is the help. life they have chosen. All right. Well, yeah. let's uh, uh, let's do some after things yeah. about that. Uh, Andrew, I will count you in. In three, two. Hello and welcome to the after. Sorry, it's, it's to the after. Sorry, that. that's where uh, we I apologize did. for everything after. <laughs> Okay, I'll get you back in again. Here we go. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the After Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Boy, there. Hello. Boy, governor. Hello. <laughs> so uh, I want to update how's this scam podcast con thing i've heard so much about what is this this a youtube did, channel what did, is this your... did we disclose like full numbers last time or no i, th I think I we were cagey we last time yeah you did not uh, uh, you did I, not. uh so so um i don't know i, I, I i'm can, gonna we let can, we I'm can gonna reveal let you as much as you want to reveal I, I, I reveal everything i don't i'm care. gonna guess i'm gonna guess okay. go ahead 900 downloads <laughs> well I, I i will i will say all right there when we were on launch 50 <laughs> <What? laughs> that's my bet that's my lowest offer i'm not going any lower <laughs> when we were on launch day when we were literally leaving where we usually eat lunch on mondays and then come here to the studio to do weird oh things. you guys eat lunch together now together, yeah like no, no, no. it's at the top. Nice time. you wouldn't have ever seen it it's at the top of a five-story <laughs> flights up oh, uh, bed and breakfast Mm -hmm. uh, oh, bed and bre bed and breakfast. Mm. Go on, nothing um, surprises me. So uh, uh, when we were leaving, we uh, I asked Brian what his guess on just audio only downloads would be per episode, and we determined that uh, uh, forty thousand was like our over under per episode. In in, in terms of like. Holy cow! We have a thing that launches day one at over forty thousand because that's that's one of the things. Like, um, uh, for example, on the uh, Scam School channel, there'll people there will be people who are like, uh, "Yo, what's up with this channel? Uh, I, I see a bunch of like three million view whatevers, and now every new post only gets forty five thousand views. What's going on?" It's like, no, they all start at forty five thousand views. It's just that every so often <laughs> you have an outlier that has a runaway success, that kind of thing. So, so like to be out of the gates at forty thousand, well, is and also it's as like, good a launch as Scam School had by a lot. Yes, uh, obviously things develop a little slower in the podcast world than they do on YouTube. I mean, uh, we, uh, we we didn't even come to YouTube for two years on Scam School. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't get what your point is. I've, uh, well, I, 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 it sounded like you were trying to differentiate the two, but but yeah. Scam School started as a podcast, and this is a podcast, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a different kind of podcast. Uh, yeah, all it's, I'm it's, saying it's the kind of podcast that what... launches. How the hell did bigger. this thing get made with this crew here? What I'm trying to say is, it's the type of thing that launches on the exact same platform as Scam School, but day one is doing better than Scam School did. That's where I'm headed. Yes. Uh, By a lot. Like, two well, but, but we don't, but we don't, like, yeah, it, it depends on what we're defining as day one. Uh, the first day. Okay. Uh, like, like, the first episodes of Scam School, a video podcast, <clears throat> yes. uh, uh, that double dipping with a high res and a low res uh, version in total together. Yeah. The first uh, couple of episodes or the first run of episodes were around 35,000 views total. Uh, this podcast, uh, immediately audio only, not even counting the video versions or the versions that are posted elsewhere is doing roughly double 
what Scam Schools launch is, was at the time. Yes. Well, and better than what, what Scam Nation to this very day does. Um, yeah. So, uh, 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 yeah, 40 K was the, was uh, an over under and now everything is over that, which is, which is good. Yes. Right. Whether or not it got there on day one. Uh, no, no, no. I, 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 I get, uh, uh, yeah. By all, what I'm trying to say is, by all measures, this is out the launch sure of that, Scam that, that School. That this wasn't that this wasn't a total failure because you were no, like, oh no, no it had I'm to get trying, to forty thousand on day one. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm I'm saying I'm saying that that Scam School when it launched, nobody knew who this was or what this was. It had no YouTube. Yes, it had no background. Yes, it had no yes, platform. Yes. Uh, 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 and it was considered a success at the time. This is doing roughly double all of those numbers. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, yes. So it it is. Uh, uh, it's it's doing better than we expected. All the episodes now are over what our initial expectation was. The uh, uh, biggest episode is uh, uh, the second one. Uh, largely because we got a a bump from uh, uh, Darknet Diaries, so a lot of people heard that first episode on that feed and then came to our feed to listen to the second one, which is great. Um, that is trending at uh, it'll be at seventy thousand in the next uh, uh, day or two, based on the current numbers. Uh, the first episode, which again uh, had. The you know it was in the feed for uh, uh, Darknet Diaries is only trending at a uh, uh, you know a uh, twenty thousand less than that so it's it's over fifty thousand so is episode three and episode four which was only released fourteen days ago is only trending a couple thousand be behind those two so in total uh, less than a month. Because we launched it on the 15th, so we are now three days away from a month after the first launch. We are at 160,000 total downloads. Which uh, we also had a really good conversation where we learned a little bit more about how podcast advertising differs from uh, YouTube adver advertising. Whereas YouTube integrations tend to be very infatuated with a particular episode and a 45 day to 90 day window or whatever uh that is not the world of podcasts well at least for programmatic ones and 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 you know so uh we are we are at a point where thankfully it's a it's an evergreen show and uh, uh if anybody gets into one episode they're gonna have a chance to get into a lot more because it'll all be there and it's not necessarily going to be particularly more to any one moment in time. They'll be, they'll be available for, it'll be very bingeable as we get forward. I think that's kind of the secret to kind of podcasting is that like YouTube, I mean, you can watch YouTube videos from a while ago, but podcasting, if it's, if it is evergreen, you don't care if it's eight days ago or eight months ago or eight years ago, you know, you go back and people like we, we get people all the time. We're like, Oh, I went, listen to your show. And then I went back and watched, you know, listened to every other episode. Yeah. Because it's, it's super convenient, easy to do. And, you know, I think that's, it's going to be exciting. I think that's wonderful. Guys, those numbers are fantastic. I'm, you know, I'm sure when you high five each other, when you have your lunch together, your special lunch together, you know, you got to feel really what good do you about even do you, uh, you are the person I've had lunch with the most in, yes, in yes, life. Yes, Justin. Exactly. I, I think you made my point precisely, Justin. <laughs> I don't think anyone will beat our record. Like I go, I have lunch with him once a week. It would, I, I had, I had lunch with the, I think sometimes we had two lunches. Like look, we, we, we had a, look, we had an early lunch and then a late lunch in like one day. We did it every How day. How do you think he's maintained the belt this long? It's by a shame. <laughs> oh, it'll never be lunches. broken. It's an unbeatable best, record. I've had so the, many lunches with Andrew. The best part of this is Justin, like feeling that like, I'm like the, the, like this, this Jill is like the fear of like, oh no, he he finally found out, and oh no, I've got to explain to him. No, I we'll wonder always where have our I lunches. get that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the the big thing that we found out is, uh, and 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 I think this was fairly new to both of us in in these terms is that um, so 
we, we've talked a lot on this program about in the YouTube universe how AdSense numbers are kind of garbage because, you know, they're, they're algorithmic. They just kind of, they stop the action, they throw in an ad, and that's that. Um, in the podcast universe, there is no big bad bully like Google to force feed all of that stuff. Yeah. And so absent that, there's a number of different competing products that will go back to your entire RSS catalog and will update all of the past episodes with algorithm, you know, with 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 ge uh, geographically appropriate, um, you know, algorithmically distributed number of ads. Um, and what happens is uh, the astonishing thing to me was on the conversation we had when they flat out said like we pretty much give two rats asses how any one episode does. If you tell us that the RSS feed as a whole does a hundred thousand listens or downloads, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe all of that is everybody listening to one episode. Maybe all of it is, is people, you know, I don't know, 10,000 people discovering the whole series and binging it, whatever. We don't care if you can promise us a hundred thousand per week, we could promise you this kind of money. Yeah. And that was fairly transformative for us. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, cause I think it's, it's possible with a show like this. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm excited to keep, uh, uh, going cause we're not that far off based on, on this trend. Now the question is, uh, you know, traditionally in podcasting, I had always understood the 90 day window to be the big window. So like your number that you say, okay, X amount of people hear this podcast is generated by your 90 day window. And I think so far we are doing really, really well with that. And, and there is still advertising opportunities that do use those metrics. So now we are coming up on a, the first third of, of, of what we would do in terms of, of understanding exactly what the top end of this. And I think we can fairly accurately predict that our average of the four scripted episode, not counting the Q and a, um, will land somewhere between 70 and a hundred thousand, um, per episode, which is, uh, good. That is, that is, you know, in, if you look at just rate cards and stuff like that for, for your average off the rack advertising, that's in the top end. I mean, obviously we're not talking about the, you know, Joe Rogan's and, and, and stuff like that of, of, of the world that are, are, you know, kind of playing in their own ecosystem, but, um, you know, for something that, that is, that is just starting out, uh, you know, so far so good. How does how does that affect your pacing for planning more episodes or you know, like for the next season? Uh, we, uh, I know that emotionally speaking, we got real excited about making more episodes. <laughs> uh, logistically speaking, uh, uh, we 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 are seeing uh, we're doing the best we can. Uh, I have a date in mind for when season two starts. And every time that we talk about season two, Brian says some version of, you know, I know we've been talking about this date and I hang up the phone <laughs> because I, I know that we would love to do it faster because it, it can go faster. We, we can push it faster and maybe it will, maybe it will come out faster, but we don't, we don't know. We don't know just yet, but I do Am agree I supposed with Brian. To hang up the phone now. No, is, is this my, is that my no. cue? No, 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 That's no. usually about how close I get to suggest to doing it faster <laughs> before you literally yes, hang up the phone. That's on what me. I usually hang okay. up the phone because okay. I, I just, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I mean, like, okay. what, what we, All right. I, what we <laughs> I mean, this is me hanging up the phone. No, 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 no. I, 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 for me, but not for thee. This is, <laughs> no, this is for, like, I, 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 I just don't, it, internally even, I don't want to promise anything, you know, because we don't, um, we don't know, we don't know for sure, uh, uh how it's going to go. But I do think that, um, to be to be honest, the success of the show certainly gives us a lot more confidence in terms of going forward with stuff because now we've proven we can do it and we've we've proven that people like it. Um, the The big question now is, 
you know, uh, uh, where where does it fit in in our in our schedules, uh, uh, and and how fast can we turn it around? And and that's something where it's not like I don't uh, I don't want it to come out tomorrow. I would I would love it if it if it, if it came out tomorrow. Uh, I just I just don't know. I have uh, uh, I think it'll be fast. We're bringing on other people, so you gonna make me hang up. No, you, you, you can gonna, talk you, about you, it. You can talk about it. You can talk about it. You can talk about it. You can talk. You can talk about it. No, the the biggest thing that I think we have learned is um, it's the feed, not the show, and that is a rule in podcasting that is not true of YouTube. In YouTube, there's not a single in integration. Like, there's no way to inject an ad through your entire back catalog on YouTube. And that's a real shame, uh, unless your name is Ted Google, uh, in which case you're thrilled about that because you have a monopoly on the ability to, like uh, an episode of Scam School from 2009, he can drop a promo for the Tomorrow War in. Yeah. It's because he's Ted Google. Uh, the difference with podcasting is you get to be the person in charge of all. You can own your feed. Because the RSS feed is nothing but a bunch of arrows that point to files, and you can always update those files. And I've never had a taste of the ability to backdate an ad campaign like this. Yeah. Because, because uh, for example, on um, uh, the Scam School channel, uh, let's, say, let's say new content does, I don't know, two to 300,000 views per uh per month uh the back catalog does another million i can't touch that million or do anything to it or monetize them in any way unless it's through ted google it's only next week's episode that i can do an integration with um whereas with with podcasts that's not the case you, know, you can you can remold reality and in fact you can you can go back and mess with everyone and you know, create a, an, in fact, oh God, I would love to see this. Somebody who has a long back catalog, just morph reality and then, and, and take stuff that they said and then alter it in the past. And then when somebody is just like, didn't you say it was like, I, I, I don't remember saying that. Yeah. And then have somebody go back and listen to episode one. And now you're saying something different than you originally said. Uh, uh, no, I, I think there's, there's a there's a lot we can do and and uh, uh you you were totally right that algorithmic ad placement is is just a fundamentally different universe in podcasting and you know that that podcasting in general is is a very weird and woolly sort of outpost to entertainment uh it it kind of it's it's listeners are very specific it's patterns are very specific uh, it has a fairly disconnected relationship with, uh, you know, I guess maybe maybe more so now with like Hollywood and TV and stuff like that. But uh, it's it's weird. Have, uh, have, have we already talked about on this show how you identify the three different personalities of a podcast, a YouTube? And, I don't know. I don't know if we have. Uh, so I don't so, recall that. Uh, okay, so um, uh, you'll have to help me complete sure. this because I only remember part of it. Uh, 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 Justin called and he's like, I see it now. A podcast is a person. It's a person who lives in your ears, who's there when you're doing dishes, who's there when you're driving the car, who over hours and hours and hours you come to know. Um, I forget what the second one was. Twitch is Twitch. a... A, when, a coffee when, house. No, it's a party. It's, it's your, you have a host. Right. We are hosting a party right now. And so whether or not we call out... Oh, oh, Rander for being oh, very, uh, uh, oh, Radar for being very excited to see Brian. Yep. Or Brian just subtly winks at the camera uh, uh, when, when, oh, when he's on. Like you are now either catering or not catering, but you're holding court. You right. are, you are telling stories. You're interacting. All parties are different, but and, and they can you, be you, different you, and you, cool for different reasons because the host is either very coolly engaging or very actively engaging, but it is always engaging on one level or another. Correct. And, and, and you say party, I think of it. You know, more as a coffee house, just because uh, you can turn on Twitch 
and then do your coding and largely ignore whatever's happening. Sure. Like, like, like you would at a coffee house or whatever. But this is the important part is that Justin realized YouTube is a zoo and you don't really care what the animal does. Oh my God. The animal's eating a dead frozen chicken. Oh my God. That, that animal's pawing at the, the, the cage. Oh my God. That, that monkey's fooled by a magic trick. Oh my God. That animal's taking a dump. Yeah. You want one thing. I'm here at the zoo. The animal better do something. Something while I'm, I'm it, here. It, 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 you better better be doing anything other than laying down. And that's, you know, you can see a lion and be like, wow, I'm in Queens right now. And there's a lion. That's crazy. It's insane that I'm literally in Queens, New York, and a lion is in front of me. That's nuts. You can know that logically, but if he's just sitting there, you're like, that sucks. <laughs> like, that's stupid. I came all the way out here to the zoo and I'm walking around. It's I, hot. I wish he was pawing there. at, you know, trying to get at the apples inside of this ice block. Yeah. Rah, rah, but when rah, you rah, see rah. the elephant and it, and it, you know, just uh, 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 expels a, a, a obscene amount of feces and you're poking your friend and you're like, oh my God, we just saw that. Like, that's the moment. And YouTube is all of those moments. It's promising you all of that because it doesn't matter whether or not this is a gigantic uh, uh, expense. It doesn't matter whether or not it's a celebrity. It doesn't matter whether or not it's something that is objectively worth watching. It matters that the thing happens. And the right thing now. happens when you're right sitting here now. right now. I just happen to walk up to this exhibit and wow, the thing happened right then. Yeah. Those are the those are the successful uh, uh videos. But there we go. My 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 grand unifying theory of new media. What would be advice you'd give to uh maybe somebody's got a story or some topic that they want to do kind of in a similar fashion to the world's greatest con? How would you, you know? What would be your advice to a starter, somebody wanting to start something? The biggest thing that I realized when I started doing uh, scripted stuff with Raise the Dead <clears throat> is uh, that I was fundamentally understanding um, creation wrong. I kept thinking that creation or that art or what I wanted to do kind of started with a brilliant seed and then was cared for and nurtured until it became a very special flower. And what through the first season of uh, Raise the Dead, I realized, no, the, 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 the gift I can give myself is a big, dumb buffet of ideas and then listen to that and use my own uh, taste and, and uh, ability to criticize to identify what's boring and what I connect to. And then at that point say, oh, that, that's what my story is about. It was effectively the biggest gift that I could give to anybody. If I could literally just touch somebody on the face and say, make more things is just when to be brutal and when to be nurturing, like, and me finding that line of like, no, I am slaughtering through all my ideas. I am being brutal and merciless through everything until I find the thing that I, I'm like, oh, well, that works. That idea, is, that idea makes sense. And I can't know it on the page. I've got to, for me, at least for my process, I've got to put it out into the, in, into the, in, into the ether. And even this was the biggest challenge in working on World's Greatest Con with Brian was trying to make sure that I could still do that if I was working with somebody else. And also that, that the person that I was working with was not only making it their own, uh, but I was channeling their ideas and I wasn't just thinking for me, okay, well, uh, uh, what's the good idea? It's what's the best idea for Brian and then being able to, to put it together. So uh, uh, I would say for any and everything is, is just, and God, you've heard it a million times, so it's it's you know not new under the sun. Uh, but in in the same way, it's like, well, how do I lose weight? Well, put in less calories and uh, expend more. Uh, uh, rush through your first drafts. Just rush, 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 like your hair was on fire. Your 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 first drafts, and and figure out that the way that actual talent and quality comes together 
is uh, uh, through the edit. And even your preparation will be better once you understand it from the other side, once you understand it from completing a thing. Because um, now having rushed through crap first drafts and figuring out what I need consistently, I can figure out, oh, this works and this works and this works. And I'm really looking for a this and I needed that. And here are the amount of names that, that a podcast listener, I, I believe, can keep in their head before it just becomes word salad. Here's how to handle time frames and and let me it's it's not too bad to keep it to two years and tell another version of the story if it goes beyond that because i want people to be able to keep that in your head that then helps the research and uh uh now i know what i'm looking for a million uh, a much better way to to go about it there was a, a remember the youtube channel i think every every frame a painting yeah yep and uh, one of the things he did, which I thought was really good, is he did sort of a talked about how the Orson Welles documentary F is for fake influenced him. Yep. And because it gets into the idea that he talked about, like, every time I did some early stuff, I would just give a list. I didn't realize that you need to use therefore or but therefore or but. And then yeah. that, his whole point. And it's a really good to sort of see, like, how do you how do you build structure? Not just let me throw a bunch of barf, a bunch of stuff at you and go, well, because of this, now this. And I think you get that really well, Justin, in your writing. I see, I see that very clearly. You get the, for this to come next, you know, it's not just an unordered list. Yeah. And, and that's been helpful in trying to build the DNA of the shows. Cause that's another thing that, that has really kind of come clear into focus over the last few projects is like, well, what do people expect? Cause I know that when I watch things or listen to things or listen to podcasts, like when I listen to a new version or a new season or something like that, I'm like, maybe in my head, I'm like, well, it better have this and this and this and this and this, because that's why I'm here. This is what I define as a listener, the brand of, of this show. And so it's like world's greatest con is going to face an uphill battle where we better be right on what we believe the DNA of the show is because we're going to lose World War II and Adolf Hitler <laughs> and all of our other main characters from this first season, and we're going to be going to a different world. But I, I suspect we know our DNA well enough and we are focused on the DNA well enough that we're, we're going to keep enough of the journey that, that we can tell a new story with it. I mean, look... Uh... I'm not worried about it. Name one podcast whose name is Serial, where they screwed everything up in season season two. Uh, yeah, and and you know I'm I'm sympathetic to their idea, but again, that is a thing where it's like I don't think they were comfortable, even if they understood their DNA. I don't know if they were comfortable with it because part of the DNA was like. Hey, is this host gonna bang this murderer? <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's that's an undeniable part of it. And it's like, I, if I'm her, I don't want this to be the like, what other shady character can this can, lady can, be can horny I be for? Infatuated yeah. with and and think maybe yeah. Um, like uh, I I I can I can see where in in a way that I know Brian's always going to be very excited about this crime. Right, right. <laughs> I know right. that Brian's always going to have a personal oh, no, no. tale that he could tell. You know what? Let's just put this on front street. I want to bang every con man. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bang them all. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and I, I think that that's 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 been a key of of also trying to figure out. Uh, uh, you know, and this is very much in, influenced by a lot. Of, all those lunches I went out with Andrew on, and we talked about story oh, structure. Oh, Andrew. Oh, now you're going on uh, lunches with Andrew now. I see. Uh, I, that's fine. Where, I, 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 thought, I thought we were salad bros. We, where we talk about- Six wings. <laughs> ranch on the side. All right. Caesar yourself. <laughs> McConaughey. Uh, uh, <laughs> boys, stop fighting. Uh, <laughs> there's plenty of me to go around. Uh no, th th we, we, we talked a lot about story structure and a lot about where things are efficient and where they're not efficient. And especially as the books came around, uh, you know, that was, I think that's, that's the one thing that I will never like, I, 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 I do know I have to by, by my raising and the fact that at some point I'm going to have to talk to Andrew about all the things that I put out into the world is like, like, 
they they got to be at least I got to have a reason why this story structure goes the way that it, I need to understand it. I need to get what it is and whether or not it's perfect for everybody. I need to know that. Uh, all right. We're introducing character uh, character A in seg one. We're introducing character B who is going to come into conflict with character A in seg two In seg three. We are going to get to the first blush of the conflict and we are going to hint as to what that, that, that sets the stakes for the ultimate conflict that's going to come up in seg, uh, uh, after our know some stuff segment, uh, we're then going to come back. We're going to give that a breather and then we're going to come back with, uh, uh, the first setup of the conflict and then either the resolution of the conflict or an epilogue, in in the final segment it's like i have to know where that's going or i have to know that i'm subverting it for a reason right i need i need to know like okay well maybe society is our conflicting character and this is a man versus nature kind of thing but i gotta know where it's going beforehand or else uh i i, I feel like that would be a failure uh andrew did did uh as Justin was saying that, it occurred to me that I'm I'm fairly shocked at how much of the DNA of so many things that we do starts with us just shrugging and doing it and then figuring out, okay, why did that work? And I think about like uh, for example, uh, you know, scam school, we figured out that there's an A block, a B block, and a C block. The A block is the sales pitch. Show me a really good trick that fools me. B block, teach it to me. I'm still skeptical. Prove to me that this is something that me, a non-magician, can do. And then the C block is this half-drunk person at the bar effectively pulling it off. You know, like, oh, my God, now I have a DNA. Now I know what I need. And likewise, it, um, I think we watched that happen with World's Greatest Con. Uh, and, and certainly, um, you know, we've talked a bit about it, uh, about it on Modern Rogue, where it's like, uh, okay, there's a called shot, a quest, a, su a success condition. There has to be some kind of stakes at the end and all that stuff. Um, as a novelist, did you go in already knowing that these, like, the, the best thing that ever happened to me was to stop using specific words and start using the phrase, okay, we need a thing that, a thing that, a thing that, and then a thing that. And then we can finally end with a thing that. Uh, once I started getting to that level of thinking of things, it got a lot easier to create. And I'm super cu curious, like in my experience, I only discovered that after accidentally doing it. And, 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 and you know, we felt it out, you know, with uh, uh, World's Greatest Con. But, but for you... I, I've always felt like you had a laser targeted approach to how you were going to write from the beginning, but I don't know if I'm just projecting that on you. You're projecting, Brian. You're projecting. <laughs> um, I, there's, you know, we're pattern seekers and sometimes we're really good at picking up patterns. Sometimes we're really good at hallucinating patterns. And the key is to sort of know the difference. And sometimes when you want to start an endeavor or you want to do a thing, you think about like, you know, we all have an experience or, you know, been around like, like magic. And as a magician learning stuff, you see somebody do a trick and, and your part of your brain goes, Oh, I need that. I, I want to do that. And if you're not good at it, which I wasn't for most of my life of understanding why you would think, Oh, I got to do the thing that that person's doing. That's what I've got to do. And because that's the only signal I pick up was they did X, Y, and Z, everybody clapped and, and I felt, oh, I want that feeling too. As you get more mature, you start to dissect and say, okay, what, what happened there? It's not that they just went through the motions. They created a moment, they created something in the room and people reacted to that moment. And that had something more to do than just, I put my hand here, I put my hand here and I said these words. And storytelling is the same thing is that in creating anything is that you you go like oh i loved i love star wars and you see like so much bad fan fiction comes from a fan not trying to can't really identify why they like a thing they put all the things they like into it and then it doesn't work the way the things they like do and it's because nothing was earned you know nothing had weight to it and and nothing was there and and other fans might like it because it doesn't matter it already has those weight and stuff and then you start to step back and say okay um 
I need to have a beat and I need to have something pay off. Like why, why did it feel good when the guy won at the end? Not yeah. just, well, let's just, you know, let's just have a bunch, somebody who just, you know, they win a million dollars every minute. That'll be a great movie. Like, no, it'll be a horrible movie. You won't care. And so you start to dissect it and go, you know, you start to take, oh, I, there's, I feel something here. Why do I feel this way? And how do I break that down? If I take this away and you start drawing circles around things, separate on each moment and you start to understand, oh, okay, this meant something here because we established something earlier on and I distracted you in the middle, but was still there. And then when it came up, it created this connection back to there and your brain snapped together and you go, Ooh, wow. And that applies you know, from magic to storytelling to so many other aspects. So I'd say for me, it's, I have to analyze why does a thing work and not know it first. I don't know. And then start drawing circles. Well, if I get rid of this, I get rid of this. Is it still there? Okay. Then I, I'm closer to it. And, and you'll hear me like, I'll criticize like as critical of like when, you know, we use surprise to describe comedy. Cause like, I don't think that's helpful. Cause like, to me, like that's everything in storytelling is surprise. Like, like maybe we start from there and then we start to say, you know, a thing that's close to your expectations, but then makes way more sense than the thing you are assuming. Yeah. Because like a magic trick, like you just, this consequent, this conclusion is so much more powerful than the one I imagined. Right. Uh, I know we've talked about it and I'm pretty sure we've played it on the stream uh, against terms of service, but uh, uh, the Kurt Vonnegut uh, shape of stories where he, the very first one he draws is man in a hole. He says it doesn't need to be a man about a man. It doesn't need, need to be in a hole. But, but uh, earlier my, um, uh, uh, my, my pick was chef. And that is very much a man in a hole story. Uh, guys got everything under, under control he uh, uh, enters a crap storm, comes out of it, everything and is better for it. That's it. That's the whole story, right? And then it's like there's there's boy meets girl. Doesn't need to be about a boy. Doesn't need to meet a girl. But he's, he starts above average, meets a good girl. Ah, oh, it's wonderful. And then, oh, God damn it. And then he got her back again, you know. And then uh, then he does the Cinderella story uh, uh, as, as a punch out. But, but those... Those giant high level thousand foot down views are, 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 I think what you need. And, and in my case, I've never started knowing what those are and then filled the gaps in. I've only done things that felt vaguely right. And then figured out after the fact what they were. Well, I, you know, David Mamet sort of had sort of a similar discussion. He talked about, you know, story is get your hero up a tree throw rocks at them, then get them down. And that's the, the throwing rocks at them is another critical element because if you're not throwing rocks at them, then you know you need a little bit of a change. And I, 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 I think the, the version that I, re, I latched onto was Stephen King said, create characters you love and then torture them. <laughs> yeah. And then, the, yeah. then randomly kill off half of them midway through the novel because you and then, created and too then, many then characters. And then just say like, I don't know, this is what I got. Do you want it or not? It's a billion yeah. dollars. I mean, the telling is so good, it doesn't matter if it ends in just a subway coupon. <laughs> like the last chapter, it's a subway coupon. Ah, cool. I really liked how we got here. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think that for me, it's just, I start with, I, I'll have a character and then, but I don't sit down to write until I have my character and my conflict. And because I write series, I usually have my character and then I got to figure out, what will be an interesting conflict? What's what's a hole to put them in or a tree to put them in? How do I torture them? You know, what can I do? It's going to be entertaining to watch them try to solve this problem. And it needs to fit with them. I'm not going to take my Sloan McPherson character and, you know, put her on a, a satellite with a radioactive core that's about to, you know, kill everybody on board as it deorbits. You know, that's going to be, you know, a Dave Dixon story, you know, and I'm not going to put Theo, you know, into a, situation where you know it's it's going to be more of a jessica blackwood where it's going to be more about why a human how a human could in, how we the psychology of the human that did it you know yeah so i mean so um i think my 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 last kind of element on this is that communication is really crucial in fact in a lot of ways it's the only thing that matters in storytelling is that or a lot of reason why uh, storytelling fails is because 
whether or not you realized it, you're making very, you're, you're sending a very noisy signal, you know? So it's like, we were talking about bad fan fiction. It's like, all right, well, if it's a star Wars story and my main character is the, 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 the son of Leia and Han, but they're also at Jabba's palace, but also Jabba's palace was moved to Endor, but also Yoda is, is now having, you know, raising a Luke clone or whatever. It's like, all Always these ideas, Force Awakens. yeah, it basically is the Force Awakens. Uh, all these ideas, while they're just things that people like or they might find fascinating about this world, but you don't realize is that when by the time that it gets to your audience's brain, they're now attaching a bunch of other stuff that they think about all these things, and so your main message is kind of muddled. And while structure, I think. Uh, uh, can can feel like it's it's homogenizing art, and that you're reducing art to something that is is kind of on a uh, a a bit of a, a recipe card. It really is it. All, all you're doing is honoring the brains of your audience by giving what you really want to say a clear signal, so they can hear exactly what you're trying to get to. And then when you, when you've established that you can complicate it a little bit. And that's why it's, you know, like episode two of, of world's greatest con was the most challenging to write because it was the thinnest story. You know, people are writing a, 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 a con. And then by the end, they wrote the con. You don't know whether or not it succeeded. You don't know whether or not uh, they don't leave and start doing it. They literally just say the book reports done at the end, but at the, uh, the biggest challenge was how do we transmit to the audience that that's what this is about. We're setting our expectations here. We're going to set the challenges here. Brian's going to tell this story. And then once we did that and we figured out a way that that could be communicated effectively, then we can add things on top of it. Then we can figure out like, okay, like if, if we know where, the beats are we know that this idea is going to get into the brains of everybody listening to it on schedule then you can complicate well, and 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 it's a self-reinforcing strategy because by virtue of us having felt our way through it once i could go back and i mean tr trust me both of us have <laughs> we listened to the first four episodes a lot and so now like just we have the shorthand of justin saying we need that first block. It's got to be a Brian story, something vaguely, you know, to this spoken off the cuff. And I'm like, okay, no, no, no. I know exactly the story I want to tell. Mm -hmm. And then, and then we go and then it's like, okay, great. Now we have to introduce I'm like, great. Got it. Like, like now I, we, we both understand the blocks mm -hmm. and then the blocks become much, much simpler. Like, um, uh, uh, that, that also happened even, even in the television show that we did hacking the system, there was, uh, two writers that, uh, uh, one of them, uh, figured out real early that Brian and Jason were never going to say whatever was written on the page. And it was best not to even bother to write a script for them. But uh, so eventually what it became was a block that says, Brian and Jason, something about spies block two. And it would be like a cut and pasted paragraph of like, get these facts right yeah. about spy history block <laughs> three something i don't know cartoon characters <laughs> and then yeah. and then and it's so a very quickly it became like uh, okay i get it i get it this is this is the part where you're just going to do whatever you're going to do this this is the part that that standards of practices says you must get right and and yeah. i think we're entering a similar area with uh with world's greatest con i would on the the structure thing back there it's like Structure is always good. And even in thing, anything that works, I would argue there's going to be a structure there. And it may not be implicit in the material itself. It could be the framing of it. What gets bad is repetitive formula. Like you have the same formula. Yeah. Like Mandalorian, what was frustrating for me was like I thought Witcher had much better stories and formula for what it had to work with, a material that most people weren't, you know, familiar with. Mandalorian was sort of the same episode with just interchangeability into it. And it also didn't build like you could have done, I think they did occasionally they did two parters, but like you could have done more two parters and stuff and say, okay, 
we're not going to get the resolution we want to this really big conflict. We're going to put them in. We're just going to make it really worse at the end of this episode and then pay that off later on. And yeah, not, that was not to derail us, but you just made me realize uh, I have no idea what the Mandalorian wants. We're two seasons in. What does he want? To be a Mandalorian. To honor well, his race. holy cow. Like, I don't know what he wants. Well, like, I, mean, I, he, I, he wants to take care of the child. No, not anymore. The well, child's now, already now gone. He's gone. Yeah. yeah. And, and well, he, he I, succeeded. He, 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 he has a vague sense that, that maybe if he's interested, he could find out if he was raised in a cult or not. But outside of that, oh, that's wild. Yeah, it's not. You, you get that he's building armor and getting money, but it, yeah, it's not a. He's not trying to go somewhere or find something or get back to, we have, we have, he has a history, but it doesn't, the other than the child, there wasn't, yeah. There, and that was like when they, oh, the so, child, so, like, okay. Uh, you know what? Let, let me segue smoothly into picks. Cause I, I, I know we're coming up on an hour here. Um, uh, 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 so, so my pick will be the dark tower series by Stephen King, who is, uh, uh, Roland of Gilead, the gunslinger is pretty much the exact same archetype as the Mandalorian. And he starts off as shallow and as one dimensional and as stoic and as stolid as the Mandalorian. And yet very slowly over time, you uncover the pain of the wars he's lost and the people that are, that have been left behind him. And by book four, you're now the bulk of the book is him remembering being a 14 year old, having won his guns and going out trying to conquer, you know, trying to fight the good fight with his friends mm -hmm. and being sent east to the town of Magus or whatever. Um, and, and then by the time you get to six and or book five and six, you, you feel this painful longing in your heart for what he wants. And I'm realizing that we've been given virtually none of that with the Mandalorian. So uh, Dark Tower does it very, very well. And, you know, and the inspiration for Stephen King doing Dark Tower was sitting there watching, you know, like Good and the Bad and the Ugly, looking at spaghetti you know, westerns. Yeah. The, yeah. Clint Eastwood's face. Yeah. 20 feet high on the screen. And Stephen King going in. Well, how would I? What is this world is in? It doesn't really make much sense. If you think well, about and, it, what's outside of this? And, and as a matter, matter of fact, uh, mistakes of production, because those were shot in Italy. And so there was mistranslations and stuff. So they would oftentimes say, oh, you're going to have to go 100 miles east to El Paso. And anybody who knows, you know, uh, American geography would know, wait, that's west. So he would intentionally in the Dark Tower talk about like he would position about how uh, the wet, you know, he was on the Western Sea headed north on the Western Sea headed north. And then he would talk about the sun rising of, of, of to what clearly is not the right direction yeah. in that environment. And you're like, wait, 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 what's going on? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, my pick is I, I finally got to the end of uh, toast of London. I had, I had saved the finale. The finale of season three is very funny. Uh, boy, that show. I like that. Matt Barry is a treasure. Quite a bit. You saw, you, you saw the tweet, right? We, 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 yeah. yeah. Do we know what the deal with that is? Uh, I assume it's a Netflix thing because there's vague. Number one, in season three, they specifically talk about uh, a House of Cards, the American Netflix production yeah. with, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, there, there was some industry chatter about it. Um, also, it makes sense because if the show is suddenly having new life on Netflix, which is where I watched all of it instead of channel four, it would make sense for uh, a toast goes to Hollywood. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, also in, in that industry chatter, they specifically use that KG language where they say, including many of the characters from the original series. Oh, wait, wait, what is the original uh, uh, the first three seasons that we've already seen. Yeah. So there is talk about a Netflix series, including many oh, of the same characters. That, oh, no, no, yeah, that, from that, the that's Channel that's what I'm series. I don't know. I, I have Toast read... of America. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it would be. It would. It wouldn't be Toast of London. It would be Toast of America. 
That's what gotcha. I'm. That's what I'm. It's looking like. Yeah, that's Dude, what they're calling it. Oh, oh, oh! Is that is that released? Yeah. I, uh, I okay, cool. Matt Berry bringing Stephen Toast to America, um, and it's going to be uh, Toast in America, heading to Hollywood. Uh, that's built amazing. in Britain, but yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very hey. excited. I look I, at John Ham, John Ham, Ham, more, more John Ham. Uh, yeah, no, I, uh, good show. Cool. Bryce. Uh, I, 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 you know, I don't think I have, I've, uh, I think you should leave is very good. I've, I, it's, it's, it's hard not to keep watching it because it's very funny because I, I will wear it out very quickly. So I'll, I'll double down on, uh, I Try think you should me leave. on coffin flaps. I swear uh, to God. All right. I'll, I'll text be, you. I'll yeah, text you the next I'll time be, I'm watching. I'm going to be in flops. triple digits by tomorrow. <laughs> Adult goes to her, man. And dad's friend. That's just, I love. Yeah. Now we're all just picking our favorite member of new kids on the block. <laughs> like, like uh, oh, I don't know. Jordan's the dreamiest. <laughs> um, my pick is if anybody's into software coding out there, GitHub uh, did a partnership with OpenAI. OpenAI developed a model called Codex, which is a like GPT-3 for code. And GitHub has the first release, which is this tool called Copilot, which works with VS Code. And I've been using it for several months and it is amazing. So there's a sign up. GitHub's handling the sign up on that. But if you want to try to get on that, Highly, highly, highly recommend it. it. You just start, you write a comment and say, I need to build a function that does blank. And there's a very good chance it will just write that function automatically for you. Wow. So That's crazy. That. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crazy stuff. And uh, I've been working behind the scenes on some stuff for it. And we're going to do, OpenAI is going to be doing a release later this summer of the Codex model. And maybe some cool things you can do with it. Mm. Uh, interesting. That's cool. No, I've seen I've seen a lot of chatter about about Copilot, um, and uh, it looks it looks very cool. It's a uh, it's very fascinating use of technology. Yeah. And I'm suddenly realizing that we've done stories, and and I'm I'm not trying to tease anyone into talking out of school, but we like like we've seen AI recreate Pac Man just by watching it, so. How far off are we from, eh, let's use Pac-Man. Um, hey, AI, watch Pac-Man. Watch it a bunch. Got it? You got a Pac-Man? Great. Look at these pictures of Brian, Justin, Andrew, and Bryce. Make them the ghosts. Go. And then, uh, I, 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 it's not crazy for me to think that, that we're not far from that, right? So... One of the things you have to think about when you see a system like, uh, you know, a, we saw the Grand Theft Auto, Grand, Grand Theft Auto's, you know, emulating, you know, a level on Grand Theft Auto. Right. That's one model. That's one model doing this stuff. When you start tying stuff together, I'm going to use Model X to do this and Model Y to do this and maybe build some code to put it together. You can do incredible. And that's it. And I, I do a lot of talk to you know, developers are looking at working on startups, do advising and stuff. One of the things I talk about is think about what you can do right now by taking two different things that, that are com compatible and putting it together, an image generator with something that does blank, character generator with a voice generator and all this. And you start realizing there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of things are possible even right now using stuff if you use it in a strategic way. So It's pretty insane. Pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Yep. Yep. So, uh, co pilot, check it out. Boom. Gentlemen, it's been after. Hell yeah. All right. I got to go watch everybody. two episodes of Hannibal. Mm. Uh, no, you don't. What? You, you don't need to do that. Wait, we're not covering it? You're not covering Hannibal this week. Really? Yes, uh -oh. really. You just gave Brian a birthday present. <laughs> Cord, cordkillers.com will have a uh, list for covering Black Widow. Uh, Rick and Morty and Loki on it's spoiling time this oh, afternoon. Then I'm gonna go watch Black Widow. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you have no idea how happy you've made Brian. You made so me thrilled. very happy. He, he was. I'm gonna go. I mean, in fact, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm gonna go watch Black Widow <laughs> right now. Uh, <laughs> I will see no, no cannibalism. It yeah. will be great. Yeah. Oh, Do you need right. Brett's Disney Plus log? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, we're gonna take it offline. Thank you for <laughs> hanging out with us. We will be back in a few hours with Cord Killers. I believe we got Bill Meeks on. Uh, follow Justin R. Young here on Twitch. Yeah. For more Justin stuff at yeah. Andrew Main on Twitter. We'll see you guys around. Bye. Bye.